So let's take a look at the HC-X1000, Panasonic's brand new prosumer camcorder offering some spectacular new features that compete with similar professional camcorder devices costing two or three times as much. Notably, the key attraction is 4K and one that has an amazing 150 megabits per second, 60 frames per second in NTSC and 50 frames per second in PAL modes, all at Ultra HD TV 3840 by 2160 pixels. Not only that, like the Panasonic GH4 HDSLM, the X1000 sports full cinema like 4K at 4096 times 2160 pixels at 24 frames per second. And of course you've got UHD TV modes at 4K, 25p, 30p and uh, 24p modes. Plus, if you want to shoot HD TV, you also have, again like the GH4, 200 megabits per second all intra modes at 1080 or long gop uh, classic FHD modes for uh, 100 megabits per second recordings. So let's take a look at the X1000 body. We can open the lens protector. It has triple ring operation which are illuminated for night time. It features a four position inbuilt optical neutral density filter featuring switchable off quarter, sixteenth and sixty-fourth NDs. This will help to reduce the amount of light entering the lens. You've got a focus assist button, uh, a focus switchable auto manual infinity focus switch and of course the good old push auto focus button for instant auto focusing of your image subject. To the right of the focus buttons you've got four user programmable and selectable buttons. Notice that the focus assist button also functions as a fifth user programmable setting button. And below that you've got uh, the menu switch with a scrollable wheel um, for you to select, push or set any of the software options on the display. You've got dual card slots uh, where you can hot swap SD cards for continuous non-stop recording. Uh, loop record if you don't know when the recording is going to start and pre-record whilst in standby mode so that a few seconds can be recorded to ensure you make your shot in time. Below the SD card uh, slots you can see the gain button uh, which features a three position gain selector with low, medium or high settings available. Um, and then obviously they've got the shutter button to adjust the shutter, a white balance switch, dual channel stereo, uh, two channels you can see here featuring line in, mic in and phantom power 48 volts. Below that we've got the intelligent auto mode or a manual selectable switch. Uh, if you're using the IA mode um, that means you can just obviously hit that button and start recording straight away. Everything is done for you including shutter and aperture uh, and white balance. So just hit that button if you haven't got a lot of time to set up and off you go and record. Then you've got the optical image stabilization button, the zebra button and a switch for the display to switch between display on screen or through the eye finder. The eye viewfinder features a 1226k dot EVF uh, at a 0.45 of an inch and the LCD is 1150K dot at 3.5 inches. Panasonic have chosen to place the two XLR buttons, one there on the left, channel two, and on the top near the handle is channel one um, for easy position on your microphones. Um, we've also got a top record button and zoom, controllable zoom if you're a handheld. The, uh, the X1000's EVF can be moved upwards or downwards um, if you uh, prefer different positions for filming in certain scenarios. On the back side the supplied battery gives you roughly four and three quarter hours of maximum continuous recordable time and actual record times of around three hours across most of the move mp4 abc hd modes using just the viewfinder. Um, Ironically, Cinema 4K mode will actually give you roughly an extra hour of maximum continuous and actual record times when using the viewfinder. Overall, you'll lose 10 to 30 odd minutes when using the LCD only whilst recording uh, in all the record modes. Charging the battery takes around six hours for a fully charged unit.
Um, to the right of that, we have the unit uh, has full computer mode compatibility with USB 3 host or device configurations set on the menu. Device mode acts as an external device to upload uh, to your NLE system. So you just connect it up and it will see it. Host mode is used so you can attach an external hard drive to the camera so that you can copy over data to and from the internal cards or actually view thumbnails of stored clips on the hard disk. Finally on the back you've got a, an HDMI version 2 output which delivers a really nice clean signal to your display or monitor and I've checked that it in 24Hz mode at 24p and uh, at uh, 50Hz 50p and 60Hz 60p was working correctly on a Panasonic monitor all in 4K so um, as I say a nice clean signal and you can use a select on the menus if you want to include um, the display settings as well. The viewfinder, as you will see, will fully retract into the unit um, for safe storage um, when you're moving around or if you just want it out the way when you're using the EVF. You've also got time lapse record, you've got pre record. Now, this is a feature of camcorders where you can actually, as soon as you switch the camera on, um, as you've got the power up time, it starts recording uh, instantly. So by the time you set up, uh, you'll be able to capture any anything you may have missed. So you're what a couple of seconds of pre-record yeah, at yeah. any one time in memory. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you do have intelligent zoom and hybrid OIS, etc. Um, you've also got digital zoom. As you're fully aware, with digital zoom, you do get a little bit of break up in picture quality, but still pretty good. Again, with the Leica lens. So uh, you know, we're really pleased to have that. Uh, still continuation. Uh, different elements of uh, controlling audio mm -hmm. and obviously mic levels etc so within the menu system. So on time code now, time, time code, code mode, time code setup, full time code setup you'd expect out of a camcorder. And you've got free run or we can just set it up to uh, uh, set up your uh, hours, hours, minutes, minutes, seconds, seconds in, into whatever flavor you wish to do so. Simp to your EVU yeah, for the bars type. If you want to do a broadcast, um, set up the camera to your studio. You've got two changeable zebra detection setups with default set at 80% for skin tones and 100% for overall picture. These can be changed in increments. There are numerous setups for display. Um, of course, center marker on, level gauge, histograms, um, level meters for audio, etc. And obviously here you can effectively change the display, what you want to see on the LCD and uh, EVF, yeah. the EVF the as well. So there's quite a lot of uh, information there just for that alone. And you've also and got maybe out set yeah. up. So, so there you we can go. Detect Whatever monitor you're uh, some resolution. Just click that a minute. See what we got yeah. in terms of. There you can see we've got the two one sixty, or the ten eighty, ten eighty i. So you can actually set up the HDMI out um, to for your device, your display device. And down convert is available on there. And then again, of course, it's quite self-explanatory. You can turn the um, these are the setups functions, yeah. settings off on the LED lights on the focus rings. Uh, then you've obviously got your frequency, as we said earlier, be able to change between the two. Um, economy AC. Yeah. yeah so brings the power down. Yeah. Displays. Yeah. And also sleep mode. So if you oh. want it to go off after a certain time, you can. And uh, yeah, actually, quite Wi-Fi setup as well, which is uh, you know, yeah, just some new thing get... for camcorders. So again, very similar to our camera, and then Wi-Fi setup. Yeah, so you're able then to control this by your smartphone, yeah. tablet, etc. Yeah. Uh, again, very similar to um, what's to our image the... range, etc. Yeah. Uh, that will control that up to 20, 20 meters. As far as we're at the moment, it will be the same app, isn't? But, but that could potentially change in the future. I think with product development and making improvements to uh, our Wi-Fi, uh, our Wi-Fi control. 
Yeah, so you can take screen grabs from the 4K picture as as you can do with um, uh, our, our Lumix G GH4. Onto the camera setup, you've got detail level, so you can turn off the camera's processing of sharpness. And it's typically typically used to tune detail until no smearing is apparent between light and dark areas of the picture. The function uh, enhances the contours or edges in an image, so detail level handles horizontal levels, whereas the V detail will enable you to adjust the vertical detail. Detail coring adjusts the noise level in the detail control. You've got chroma level, the adjustment in the saturation of the colour level, uh, and then obviously you've got the chroma phase, which is another meaning for colour hue. The more you increase it, the more it leans towards purple and magenta. The more you decrease it, the level then shifts towards yellow and green. There's two setups for colour temperature, for instant recall into your scene setups, AB for setting towards a more warmer or cooler light correction. Master pedestal for black level reference, the control lifts the black level and affects the brightness balance in the image. Then you've got DRS either off or on, one, two or three settings, this adjusts the dynamic range stretcher. You've got a number of gamma curves available, the usual camcorder HD norm and HD low and SD norm and SD low gammas plus the uh, more reputable Cine V contrast priority gamma and the Cine D dynamic range priority, which is great for grading. You've also got B press where the video signal in the low intensity area is compressed more, creating a sharp and strong contrasting picture in low contrast scenes. You've got matrices and knee function, an auto low, mid, high knee function uh, to allow for higher video levels in the dynamic range. Skin tone detail allows you to improve the facial skin colour detail, smoothing out any skin irregularities. Focus transition time settings uh, to set up uh, focus settings uh, over a variable amount of time. You've got flash band compensation for reducing light band interference, uh, such as flash photography. The X1000 allows you to quickly set up focus assist with area focusing and area iris modes. Focus peaking with expanded focus screen functionality. You can change the colour of focus assist between different colours uh, accordingly. And when you're in focus in red mode, the display changes to show you a red border. This allows you to speedily get focus as the subject glows brilliant red within focus. Both mode means expanded focus and focus in red or one of the other colours is working. You also get three focus point transition points for changing the point of focus between subjects. So you can set and store for the scene you're filming either directly or at time interval points. Well that quickly summarises the X1000. Um, I really like this camcorder um, and uh, I'm going to be coming back to it showing you exactly in another video of uh, what we can achieve at 150 megabits per second in 50p and 60p modes. Um, for now here is a, a quick specification rundown and thank you once again for watching.